Okay, if you've been following the tutorials over the last few weeks, I've been showing you how to make your MC202 semi-modular. Now today I'm going to show you how to add some more oscillator outputs. I've already shown you how to do the triangle, but today I'm going to show you how to do the square, uh, the saw, and the sub-oscillator. Now to do this, you just need uh, three and a half millimeter jacks and some shielded wire. So it's quite simple again. But I'll be posting up schematics on the blog, and if you're looking at this on YouTube, the address for the blog is www.dinsync.info. Now, basically, uh, once you've added these and you've added the other ones I've already shown you, you can actually do some quite cool tricks on the 202 itself. So I'm just going to uh, basically play some sounds, and then I'm going to do some experimenting, so you have to bear with me. I don't know what it's going to sound like until I've actually done it. But here's the 202 on its own. Now, some of the things you can do here, you can take, uh, for example, you can take any output you like, even if it's not open in the source mixer, say for instance the saw, and you can use the saw to cross-modulate the filter. If I take that away, and then I add it. You can hear the triangle is actually affecting the frequency of the filter. Uh, I can do that again with the, the sub. Now you can do as much of this as you like. You can, you can basically just take a raw oscillator output, say for instance the square wave, and put it straight into the filter. Now it's not going to play until I gate it. And you can do it again, you can do that straight into the VCA. But then you don't, you don't have any filter control or envelope. So yeah, let's uh, take this out to the modular now. So let's say if I take the saw wave out and I plug this into, what I've got here is a uh, wave multiplier. I showed you this one before. And this is quite cool. And it basically gives you phase shifted copies of an input signal, but you have to use a sloped waveform. So this is only going to work with the saw or the triangle. So I'll just plug that in to input there and I'll take the output to the mixer. And I'll turn the volume up and I won't need to get this because it's raw. So you've got the saw. I'm just going to run the output to an attenuator because it's a little bit loud. I'll just plug that in and I can adjust it. Now if I take the LFO, let's say the sign that we added before, and I can control this to one of the CV, uh, CV control on the wave multiplier. And likewise, if you've got more LFOs in your system, if you've got, for example, a modular such as myself, you can take another LFO to another CV of another phase shifted wave. And if you've got another LFO, you can add that too. Or you could take the output to a filter if you've got one. I'll just plug this in. This is the A106 number five, the SEM filter.
And now if we take, again, the square wave output, we can modulate the filter here. But if we take the output from the SEM filter and plug that to the VCF input jack on the 202, we press a key. Or you can modulate the filter with a triangle. Or we can swap them round, triangle and saw around. And of course we can also mix in the original waveforms. So I'll just blow, put some notes into this. You can come up with all sorts of things. I mean, obviously with a modulator, you're not limited to what you can do. You're limited really by your imagination. And then the more modules you have, the more fun you can have. And that's pretty much it for the 202 modifications. There is one more that I'm going to show you next time, which is basically CV gate inputs so that it bypasses the internal sequencer. Um, so that you can use this with a CV gate controller. Or if you've got a MIDI to CV, you can just connect it up to your... Uh, your door, you know, your favorite sequencer. Because the thing is, with the 202, it does already have CV ins, but they go through the internal CPU and they basically get quantized and they lag. And you can adjust the lag in, if you've got plug in, you know, sort of compensation delay, but it's never quite right in my experience. Um, so it's much better to use the CV gate inputs. And I'll show you that next time. Um, again, if you're looking at this on YouTube, the blog address is www.dinsync. Dot info and you'll be able to find schematics for these extra oscillator outputs you'll also be able to find the tutorial how to do the audio vcf input the um the vca inputs uh, cv outputs for the sine and triangle waves of the lfo and cv output for the envelope generator and cv inputs for the vcf filter control and for the pulse width modulation control as well so yeah, check it out and keep your eyes on the blog. There'll be more videos to come.